In this lesson, let's talk a little bit more about subtools and also transforming the objects in our scene, so moving them around. So we touched on subtools a little bit. Let's go ahead and spend some more time on that. So let's say we draw out a sphere. So we'll draw this out, go to edit mode. We've got a nice sphere in our scene. Most of the times we're going to want a more than one kind of piece of geometry as part of our model. Think about that gun. It had a lots of different pieces. And so we want to actually be able to add another piece of geometry to this. So to do that, we're going to go into the tool palette, subtool, and let's open that up. So you can see it expands out. We've got one slot taken by this sphere. Let's actually make it a poly mesh. So we have all these other slots where we can add additional pieces of geometry. So to do that, we can go to append, and let's append a cone. Now you can see the cone is right on top of the sphere, so we see part of the cone and part of it's inside the sphere. We can also append other ones. So we can append this poly mesh star if we want to. Now some of these we can't see. If we go to turn on the transparency, you can see the different objects. Okay, let's turn that back off. So now we have multiple objects, or multiple subtools within a single Z tool. So if we were to save the Z tool out, and bring it back in, all of these subtools um, are going to be here. Okay, we can go in, we can turn the visibility off on individual subtools. We can also select a particular subtool and we can go to solo, and that'll only show us the selected subtool. Okay, to do that manually, we could come in here and select this and then just turn off the visibility of the other subtools. Now, we want to be able to transform these subtools. So let's say, you know, we don't want, to want everything on the origin, so we want to move the cone out. So we'll select the cone, and we want to move this. Now, to move it, we're going to go use the Move tool, W. When we activate this, it's going to activate Transpose, and it creates this sort of a line here. So what we want to do is drag our line, and we'll just drag it from the top to the bottom, and we can grab the center of this and move it off to the side. Okay, if we were to come in here, and this, this line is something where you can constantly be repositioning it, just like this, based on our geometry. If we were to come in and take this, it's actually going to deform it. Okay, so we'll want to grab the center line to be able to move it around. We can also use scale and rotate with the same transpose line. So if I use scale and drag a line out here and I scale it out like that, you can see it's actually scaling it. Or if I rotate it, it'll rotate it based on that pivot. So if I wanted it to rotate from this side, I can rotate it from there. So this is the rotation pivot point. We can grab the star and we can do the same thing. So I'll just drag one out and we're actually rotating, so I want to move it off to the side. So I can move it, I can kind of place it, I can put it up on the top like that. Or if we wanted to rotate it, we could come in here, and if I just click on the middle axis, I can rotate it around the axis on which I've drawn my transpose line. Does that make sense? Otherwise, I'm going to rotate it like this, okay, around that pivot, so kind of in screen space. So we have a Z tool with lots of different subtools. If we go in and look at like the gun or we could even bring in the sort of the mech as a kind of example with lots of other subtools. You can see this has a ton of different subtools in it. Okay. Now a way another way we kind of looked at to select subtools is just to hit the Alt key and click on a subtool and that'll change. You can see our selection changing to whatever subtool I'm clicking on with that Alt key selected. And again, we can go in and solo that. So you can see that's part of one subtool. Now, you can see all the different pieces involved in this subtool. We do have the ability to split geometry and combine geometry. So I could say, okay, I want to split to parts. I'm going to say uh, this is undoable. I'll say okay to that. So it's going to take that subtool and it split it into all those different pieces. So now we have a ton of different subtools with all the little bits that go into that. If I wanted to sort of recombine some of those, I could select that and let me turn off solo. I could select one of those objects and let's look concentrate over here on the subtool palette. We can come in and we can merge those back together. So instead of splitting, that will merge. I'm just going to say merge down. Say always okay, that's fine. And so now I can begin to merge 
And so what's happening is it's taking the subtool and it's merging it down with the one below it. So if we go in and solo that, I'm starting to add more and more pieces to my subtool. So subtools are really cool because you can kind of separate them out, you can combine them back together in, in ways that make sense for your particular model. So you may have a subtool that's just the wheel of a car or just the maybe it's the wheel and the tire, or maybe uh, maybe you have subtools for both wheels. And you can really kind of combine and separate things. It's kind of like a little bit like a uh, a group in something like Maya. It's it's a little bit different, but uh, when you save out your Z tool, you'll have all that geometry saved inside as subtools. And one of the nice things about working with subtools is the fact that you can have um, your poly count can be very high based on individual subtools versus having everything in one subtool. Another thing that we can uh, do here when working with subtools is to use a Z plugin. So if we go to Z plugin, and it's called Subtool Master, and it just has some really cool things that we can do with subtools. So we can mirror subtools. We'll do that with the, the eyes for our character that we create. We can fill our subtools with materials very quickly or color. Uh, we can make everything high res. We can make everything low res. Um, or we can you know export. We can do multi-append. So if we had a bunch of OBJ files that we wanted to bring in, we could bring those all in at once versus importing and then appending them to our subtool. So the Subtool Master is going to be a great way for you to uh, to work with subtools as well. Okay, now I, I wanted to, to just show you one other way uh, of kind of moving things around the scene. So we talked about moving it with Transpose. So just grabbing it and moving it around. You can also come down in the tool palette to Deformation. And there's a, a deformer called Offset. And you can actually use this offset to move your object in a particular axis and you can move it a, a particular amount. Now it's not something where it keeps track of coordinates. It's basically I'm going to move it this amount and then it zeroes back and you would have to do it again. So, Or you could put a number in there. But it's not like you will move it and then it'll stick right there and you'll know where the zero point is. So, But that is another way to kind of move your objects around the scene. You also have the ability to rotate and change the size of those. Uh, just like scale and rotate uh, with transpose. Okay, so that's a kind of a quick look at working with subtools. And as we go through our project, we'll get a more practical kind of look at, at, at working with these things. Um, but that's kind of a quick look at it. Next, let's take a look at subdividing because sub subdividing is a very important part of ZBrush. Uh, not only subdividing for sculpting, but also now there's dynamic subdivision that we can use to smooth our models. So let's take a look at that next.